Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel, Cedric here in Antwerp and it's Tuesday so that means another brewery breakdown. Today I'll be going over the history of the Amstel Brouwerij. Amstel is probably best known, next to the beers of course, um, for the Amstel Gold Race, an international cycling event in I think April and I actually do believe that they did a tall ships race as well. But since I know absolutely fuck all about cycling or sports in general, um, we'll be talking about the brewery itself today and just the brewery. Now, as I often say, breweries not only sell beers, they mainly sell stories. And the story of Amstel Brouwerij um, goes as follows. Two brothers-in-law, Johannes Hendrikus van Marwijk Kooi and Charles uh, Charles Antoine de Pesters, who had married Johannes, well, the besters who had married Johannes' sister, uh, Petronella, were not only family but best friends as well. They liked to have the occasional beer, as we all do, but somehow they couldn't manage to find uh, a beer in all of Amsterdam that they both liked at all. So out of thin air, um, they created their own. The end. In reality, of course, uh, both Charles and John, or Johannes, were, were descendants of wealthy families and the rising popularity of decent beers and a market with practically nothing but small players and local players meant that there was room for big players to compete with everyone else and be dominant in the end. They teamed up with a third partner, uh, their friend Willem Eduard Uhlenbroek, whose father owned a sugar refinery in Amsterdam, which is also quite handy in a brewery. They found a property at the Mauritskade, at the canals, in the industrial heart of Amsterdam, and they started building a brand new, for the time, huge modern brewery, with a capacity of no less than 10,000 hectoliters per year. That brewery was finished in October 1871, so the first Bock beer could go on sale in January of 1872. And that was followed by Pilsner about a decade later, which is the beer we all know right now. Now, the trio obviously had a nose for business opportunities and employed some good engineers, because 150 years ago, refrigeration um, was kind of a challenge and they made mainly low fermented beers uh, exclusively. So now they already used water from the canals to brew with and some ingenious engineer uh, came up with double walled cellars alongside the canal to store the canal's winter ice to be able to cool the process all year round. Kind of crazy, but like I said, ingenious. At first, Amstel was mainly drunk in and around Amsterdam, but with the expansion and electrification of the railway network in the Netherlands, their reach grew along as they deployed agents in towns on those railway lines, uh, like Harlem, Rotterdam, etc, etc. And of course they did compete uh, with all the local players, but now they could fan out. Eventually, in 1883, they started crossing borders too, exporting to the UK and the Dutch East Indies colonies, and UK colonies as well, of course. And this was so successful that they even built a brand new bottling facility just to pasteurize and package their beers for the overseas market. Amstel, or Amstel, spread like wildfire and in January 1891, they changed the name from the Pesters Koi and Co, because it was called that until then, to Bayers Bierbrouwerij de Amstel, or Bavarian Beer Brewery de Amstel. Named after the river Amstel, which runs through Amsterdam, and they immediately went public with the company. A good move, it turns out, because with the money and influence the investors had, they could expand production and reach, and by 1915 they'd reached production capacity of 200,000 hectoliters a year. 
while 10 years later they were responsible for nearly 35% of all the Dutch beer exports. A bit later, in 1941, Bayer's Bierbrauerij de Amstel teamed up with another huge player, Heineken. Together they took over another brewery in Amsterdam, the Van Vollenhovens Bierbrauerij or the Gekroonde Valk, the Crowned Falcon, which they kept open for another 20 years uh, before moving production to their other sites in 1961. Around the same time, in 1954 to be exact, Amstel started a foreign expansion as well with the build of a fully functional brewery in Suriname or Dutch Guiana. About a year later, they became the first brewery to export beer in cans because they added a cannon line in, uh, in Amsterdam. The export alone added up to over uh, 100,000 hectoliters a year and in 1958 they opened a brewery in Jordan. In 1960 a production facility saw light of day in Curaçao. And finally in 1963 two new breweries were opened in Puerto Rico and Greece. However, uh, the Greek facility was quite short-lived as it closed down under the Greek junta only a few years later. Uh, instigating, by the way, a huge beer smuggling ring uh, from Holland and the surrounding countries to Greece. But I'm um, digressing again. So Amstel was pretty much all over the place and again a smart move because this uh, way they could save on labor cost and transport fees and easily cater to local markets as well. About those local markets uh, when I'm reviewing one of their beers tomorrow we'll see about that as well. As well. Of course, as usual, a company that expands this rapidly and, and has so much success um, draws attention of, of other players. And in 1968, Heineken made an offer to buy them out. They agreed and about 15 years later, all production of Pilsner beers was moved uh, from the Mauritskade to the Heineken brewery in Zuterwoude, about 50 kilometers south, more or less near The Hague and not so far from here. Bok and specialty beers were produced in Sertogen Bosch near Breda and Welre, which is um, more than 200 kilometers away near the German border. So, yeah, fanning out again, but in a different way. The old Amstel brewery in Amsterdam was completely torn down and sold off. And today the only building that remains is the 1930 office building, which is currently still in use, by the way, but now it houses part of the Hogeschool Amsterdam. Following the takeover and surfing on the success wave that Amstel was, Heineken adopted several other breweries all over the world and renamed them to Amstel brand as well. For example, uh, in 1981 they bought the Hamilton Brewery in Canada uh, from the German Henniger Group and renamed it Amstel Canada. And in 1994 they did the same with the Hungarian Komaromi, or Komaromi Brewery um, and baptized it to Amstel Sergiar. In 2020, Heineken also ordered a complete redesign of the Amstel branding. And it's important to notice here that they didn't order a rebranding, but merely a redesign of the current branding, or at the time branding, meaning a modernization of the existing brand identity. Originally, Charles and Johannes had the logo designed to their preferences, um, as one does, of course. They were both prominent citizens of Amsterdam, but also avid billiard players, and they wanted both aspects to shine through. Now, be it a bit tongue-in-cheek, uh, maybe, but they started out with a circle, divided into a red and a white half. This represented the red and white billiard balls. And the black lettering, which was added, was of course added because um, the colors of Amsterdam are red, white and black. All this was enclosed in a golden ring, partly to represent the top ring of a beer keg, but partly, uh, partly to provoke the idea of class and standing while, references, uh, while referencing to the golden beer as well. 
And finally, at the top, we have a simple blue coat of arms bearing the golden A of Amstel carried by two lions. Just like the coat of arms is carried by two lions on the official flag of Amsterdam at the time. The design bureau burdened with this task, uh, with the task of redesigning this whole branding package, stayed true to the original and mainly simplified the logo, cutting excess text and making it a bit more lean and easier on the eye. Following traditions, the Amstel brand still makes mainly low fermenting beers or low fermented beers like Buck and Pilsner and later joined by Radler and alcohol free or, or low alcohol variants. And yeah, that's where it ends. Now we are today, 2023. Um, they are still very international. Uh, for example, the beer I'm reviewing tomorrow is not the Amstel Pilsner, the classic, uh, but a Spanish local brew. So, I will see you guys again tomorrow. In the meantime, if you have any questions or uh, want to share anything, leave it down in the comments. If you like this video, click that thumbs up. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll get notified whenever I upload something. See you guys tomorrow with a beer because it's freaking 33 degrees here. Cheers, you guys.